Dear Mom, I love you. I want you around forever, and I'm worried you haven't gotten the vaccine. I get why you've waited, but can we talk about this? I need you. The COVID vaccine may be the most important thing you ever ask about. Isn't it worth a try? Hi, this is David Stockton with Stockton Mortgage, the official mortgage provider for KSR. Headquartered in Kentucky with local service and local decisions, we've been helping people finance their homes for 20 years, and we would like to help you too. Purchase or refinance. If you have not taken advantage of these historically low rates, you could be missing out on substantial savings. But these low rates will not last forever, so go to Stockton.com or call 888-914-2276 to get started. NMLS number 8259, Equal Housing Lender. Talk Radio 1080. Welcome to Hour 2 of Kentucky Sports Radio, presented by Stockton Mortgage. Now, here's Matt Jones. Welcome back. Hour number 2, Kentucky Sports Radio, 502-571-1080. Text machine is 772-774-5254. Cats and balls, 9 o'clock tonight. ESPN's been hyping this game up for a week. You rarely see them like, promote a college game a week in advance, but they've been doing that with Kentucky and Tennessee. And it's because of their 10 highest-rated basketball games this year on ESPN. Eight of them have either been Kentucky or Duke. And I think the other two were Kansas. <laughs> Not surprised. I mean, those are the teams that rate. So that's why people, you know. We are the needle. Well, we don't just move the needle. We are, the, we, we are college to basketball, yeah. you know. Well, I know you said it. I'm reiterating it. <laughs> You're emphasizing I'm it. I'm emphasizing Yeah, gotcha. One person writes, Matt, if we come to these shows, do we need to dress up? No, just be yourself. This is not, you don't have to wear a suit. We're not going to like 1950s baseball game. Yeah. No, just, you know, just be yourself. But, but I would love to have you. And, and and be loud and, and proud, especially if you come on Saturday night to the wrestling. Friday, just be your normal self. Don't be too loud because we're doing a show, and I will tell you to hush. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> on the air. <laughs> <laughs> Can we bring it down a couple of levels just on the volume it down there? Just a little bit. <laughs> that would be nice. All right, let's go over a couple things here. First of all, I, I have to say the story, Ryan, about my friend – and business partner Craig Greenberg has just blown my mind over the last 24 hours. Yeah. Of course, found out while I was on the air yesterday. But, I mean, I mean, it's making national news. Like, yep. it was on all the morning shows today. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy when it's somebody you know. You know what I mean? Like, you uh-huh. don't think of the news being like that when it's somebody you know. So, Craig was sitting in his office. He's running for mayor in Louisville. He's sitting in his office with his staff, and a man walks in 10 feet away from him and takes five shots and somehow doesn't hit him. Um, Blessing. Total blessing. He has a hole in one of his uh, sweaters where it went through the sweater, like the excess fabric on his shoulder. Wow. Unbelievable. But didn't hit him. I mean, I I talked to him last night, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be alive. Very lucky. I can't imagine how shaken he must be. I, I can't. You know? I mean, could you put yourself in that situation and just try to think how? I mean, it, you're sitting in your office, yeah. and like he comes in and just ten feet away. I, I mean, I don't. That would be a hard thing to get over. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. Like that would just be a hard thing to get over, and it's so weird because you and I know him. He's like the most innocuous guy it. in the world. I know it. You just talked to him the day before. I talked to him a couple of days ago. At I LBW. don't know how anyone would dislike him. Like, put the you know, I, I, I say put politics aside. Nobody can put politics aside, unfortunately. But just as a human being, you know, when, between me and you, when he said he was going to run, I was like, I don't know. He's kind of, kind of a plain dude. Like, is he going to be able to? But like, that was almost a compliment for me because he's so nice in a world of people that all have huge personalities. He's like the nicest guy. I've never heard him raise his. I, I've been with him a lot over the last year and a half. Never heard him raise his voice, get frustrated. I mean, it was. It's just crazy that this would happen to somebody you know. Yeah, I know it, it, it shook you yesterday when you saw the tweet and you, then you realize you hear all the details about it and it, it does shake you. Well, being, when it first came out, I thought like somebody just drove by the building he was in. Yeah. But when you hear walked into his office and 10 feet away from him, somehow missed him, somehow yeah. missed him. God's got a plan for that guy. And now the guy who 
who did it was the dude who went missing last year. Yeah, that to me is also an incredible story. You remember we talked about him on this show that I had said people say to me, this is a brilliant young guy and he's gone missing and I hope he come, you know, hope they find him. Well, it turns out I think he had just left and kind of had run away and then he came back. He's running for city council. Like, I, you know, I, I think this is, this is my opinion. I think it's going to end up being a national like, it's already a national story, but I think it's about to be, like, a big yeah. thing. It just feels like. But it's also interesting because when you, it's so easy to see stories like this and think of them as just names. I say this about politicians all the time. It's easy of them to just think, well, that's, but you don't think about that there is a human being sitting there. And that there's a human being that got up, went to work, was sitting there. And out of nowhere was nearly taken in seconds. And what about his four staff members? Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. So thank God he's all right. But I, 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 man, the fragility of life, so many things like that you think about, it could have been gone like that. So. He's got, he's got to be a strong person because I, I don't know how easy it would be for me to ever go back in that office. Well, how do you, well wouldn't you be nervous just, walking just around. continuing to run? Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? Like the next time, if I if it were me, the next time I go and – and he's going to have to go and do things if he's going to run, right? Like the next time, wouldn't you be looking around? Oh, of course you would. Yes, yeah. you would. I mean, it would be hard to go out of your house after that. It would be. Because it's not random. This dude – was like targeting targeting yeah. him yeah i i don't know how you just just go out and do stuff you know yeah. and and then little thing like I, I know this is i mean i people have said to me some of our ovw folks like are you worried well no but like you know they think about it so I, i'm just Prayers to his family and him. Yeah. He's a, he is an awesome person. And I I just, you talk about a story that was just like, my goodness. Now, on a completely different note, I got this text machine. One person writes, Matt, there's a radio show in town that is saying every morning that the reason Cal is mad every, day, every press conference is at you guys. No. He <laughs> insists... That Calipari's frustration, quote unquote, with the fans is really a frustration with you. Do you think that is correct? Well, no, I don't think that is correct. But I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have no idea what he's upset about. He doesn't listen to the clutter, though, so he wouldn't listen to what we're <laughs> yeah. saying. So I don't think he would be talking I don't, about I us. don't think he listens to anything, but I think there's probably people that tell filter, him. Filter it through to him. Filter sure. And then who knows, yeah. like, what there's what you say, and then there's what you're told. It's the telephone game, right? It is yeah. the telephone game. But, you know, I keep having more and more people say this. And I don't think that's the case. But I do want to address if it is the case. I hope John Calipari, if it's the case, would realize that this show, over the course of its decade, could not have been more supportive of him. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) You were the main voice supporting him. I've been supportive when it was easy, and we're winning every game, and I was fighting the national media. How many fights did I get in with Pat Forty, Pete Thamel, Jeff Goodman, Dan Dockage? Gary Parrish. How many times? A lot. Ten, a lot. Ten, ten years ago, that was what this show was, this almost show on a was daily fighting, basis. Fighting for Cal. Yes. That's what this show was yep. for years. And then when we're losing, I've universally said, you folks that think he can't coach, you're insane. Of course he can coach. Then last year comes. We were 9-16. and 16. You can't put lipstick on that pig. (laughs) That's true. It was terrible. Now, I never said he should be let go. I I said over and over, I want him to be my coach until he wants to leave. But we also said it wasn't good. 
And a lot of things went down that were bad. Not just the play, but I didn't like the things he would say in press conferences about Dante Allen or about us, the fans. I don't know how we could have had a different reaction. Did they want me to come on the radio after the games and say, well, lost again. That's all right, though. It's all good. <laughs> Some of the media are, though, just over the top homers, which I don't think, they, I think we're fair. But the question is, if you're like that, then I don't know how anyone can listen to you when you're making good points. So if I am up when they're 9 and 16 saying things are great like Baghdad Bob, then when there's something important to argue, why would anyone you, listen to you me? You lose your credibility instantly. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Why you, would you anyone to. listen to me? So you remember a few years ago when they thought about hiring Bobby Petrino? Well, they didn't think about it, but fans wanted him to hire Bobby Petrino. Yep, yes. I came out and was like, that's a horrible idea, and they're not going to do it. One of the things I had a conversation with somebody at UK about afterwards was they said to me, somebody at UK said, I appreciate you doing that. It helped us. And I said, but I want you to remember that I did this because the only reason fans listen to me about that is because I said Joker wasn't doing a good job. If I said Joker was doing a great job, then when I said don't hire Bobby Petrino, everybody would have said, shut up, Matt. You have to be honest, Ryan. So I have no idea if Cal's frustrated or not. I assume he's not because I assume he knows we're on his side. But... If there is any extent that he is, I don't know how you could have credibility and be more of a supporter of all things UK athletics than this show is. Am I wrong? No. Not one time has anybody on this show said that they think he needs to be replaced or he we need to look for nothing. Never. Always been supportive. Do we know, have we questioned some things that have come up? Yes, absolutely. But like you said, Shannon hit the magic word. It's credibility. We have to do that. We have to, even when times are good, when times are bad, we have to speak the truth of what we feel like to have that credibility to listen to us. I said we need to go get some shooters. What did he go do? Got a great shooter. He went and got Kellen Grady and C.J. Frederick, who's not playing but is a great shooter. Right? We yep. said we've got to get a point guard who can play. They went and got Severe Wheeler. I mean, I said they've got to increase their offensive pace to play more modern basketball. We're second in the country in offensive efficiency. It feels like, now he didn't do those things because I said it. He did them because he knew that was correct, too, and he went and did it. Mm -hmm. We we said he checked every box. Everything you would have wanted him to do, he went and did. Yeah, coaching changes. We felt like that maybe some of those were needed. Did I, it also. Yes, exactly. Coaching changes. There were a couple guys who I didn't think were necessarily pulling their weight. Replace them. Guess what happens? Weight starts being pulled. Yep. <laughs> I think that's the best staff we've had since 2015. Right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I I, I don't really know what else you could do. If you want to have a radio show that is effect, let me tell you something. There have been, I'm going to tell you a little secret, Shannon. Hopefully nobody's listening but me and you. Okay. There have been a lot of radio shows in this state. A lot. There's only been one that's had this level of success. And why is that? Well, the haters of us will go, well, UK basketball, you ride the wave. Well, there are other ones. What wave did they ride? The reason is we're real. And we don't just talk about sports. We're real. And if you take that away, then we're just like everybody else. Then we're just, you know, the official show. And no, and who cares? So, anyway. So I don't know if the person that's saying that is right. I don't think they are. But if they are, I don't know what else somebody would want us to do. Matt, I don't know if you know this, but I've had somebody say, the wind blows hardest at the top of the flagpole. Who said that? Who just Cal did Oh, he did? Yeah. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. Does he <laughs> say that he a said, lot? He said, when does he say that? Dogs He's, don't chase parked cars. That, that was John F. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the other John. <laughs> yeah, well, when, these quotes you're saying, are you sure you're attributing them to the right person? I, I think it was a John. Yeah, it was a John. Okay. John Sherman Cooper. Like, is that what, like, who are the Johns? Cal, Cal, Cal has said both of those on his, like, rants about criticism and stuff. Okay. I know poop ice cream. 
And I know Pike will have never heard the wind blow as hard as... And I know we are the Super Bowl. What are his five biggest ones? What are the five lines you think he said the most? Be your brother's keeper. Ooh, I like that one. I wouldn't have had that. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, We're everybody's Super Bowl. That's number one. Yeah. That is number one. I said the needle thing earlier. The needle thing? Yeah. Yeah. What else? Yeah, you're right. The freshman, he used to go with that all the time. Freshmen think they, you know, they poop ice cream. He liked that one a lot for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, up until this year, he was positionless basketball. <laughs> we can't say that this year. He loved that. Yes. Uh, um, tweet, you know, wait, I tweet. got it. They're not machines. Yes, you're not machine. Yeah. You people, <laughs> oh, you people are crazy. You people are crazy. Yes, yes. Yeah. they're not machines. I feels like he says a lot. Yeah. Depends on what year, what you know, what era of Cal we're talking about. Right. Tweak was every year there That's for true. about three uh-huh. years. Seven seven two seven seven four five two five four. Give me the ones you think are said the most. We'll be right back. To talk to Matt Jones and the crew, call the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line at 502-571-1080 or 1-877-904-1080. Or send us the Kentucky Brandit KSR Tweet of the Day by tweeting Matt at KY Sports Radio. We just remember among your side. Thanks for listening to Kentucky Sports Radio on Talk Radio 1080. Welcome back, KSR. Segment sponsored by DonFranklinAuto.com. If you need a vehicle, go to DonFranklinAuto.com, and especially if you want to make a trade. Trade in your vehicle, get $1,000 more from DonFranklinAuto.com. Do it today. There is no better place to buy a vehicle in Kentucky. 24 locations near you. We'll be at one Friday in Somerset. It's DonFranklinAuto.com. Drew Franklin just wrote in. Yes. Said, I know... I don't. I, I don't mean to get uh, brought into this, but Ryan made that flagpole line up. Cal has never said that. I've listened to every Cal Perry press conference. He's never said the thing about the flagpole. What was the quote? One more time. It, the wind blows the hardest at the top of the flagpole. I, I, someone has said that. Yeah, Cal said it early on. That was one of his go-to's. Yeah, I'm just telling you, Drew says you're a liar. All right. Um, here's some others. Kentucky's not for everybody. Yes, that's a that's a definite. I haven't seen him. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I w- this is one that makes me roll my eyes until I'm about to fall over. I was wrong once. It was in uh, 1978. I love that one. That's <laughs> yeah. probably my favorite. Uh-huh. Best version of yourself. Yeah. Basketball bennies. Yeah. I hate yes. basketball bennies. Yes. Yeah. So see, that's one of the things that made <laughs> us mad last year, right? The basketball bennies coming because yeah, he would get mad at us for caring. Yeah. Like those of us that were still watching that 9 and 16 team play, he'd be like, "Stop watching." Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's what is what else? I just looked up the quote. It's not at the top of the flagpole, it's at the top of the mountain. Okay. Yeah. I'm sleeping with his mom, talking about Brad. <laughs> 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 he did used to say that yeah. a lot, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. I don't pay attention to the clutter. Yeah. It's another good one. Yep. These are all great. These are th- these are these are great. I like this one. Oh, I got one. Yeah, this ain't for everybody. This ain't for everybody. Yeah. That's exactly I can't right. Hide you oh, another T-shirt game. I can't hide you. Yeah, here. another yeah. good one. I like this too, Matt. Every time the game's over, he takes the player that's like the eighth or ninth man, and if he has two points, he'll come in and go, "How about Lance?" Yeah. <laughs> He does do that, Ryan. He does take like the eighth or ninth man and just comes in and goes, hey, how about Dominique tonight? You know, <laughs> he does that all the time. He does that all the time. Great call. Those are, those are really good. Those Andy, are really good. Go ahead, Andy. What's up? I've been doing this a long time, but I'm not saying how long. Yeah, he, says, he does say I've been doing this a long time. You're right. And he says, are you ready for this? He's always saying that. <laughs> all right. What else you got? Okay, uh, I, just want, I know you hadn't got to it yet uh, about William Cohen. Yes, I'm going to try to get uh, to it today. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to ask a question, then you can answer it if you want to now or whenever you get to it. Um, I just want to, I, I kind of think that he is gone, uh, but my question is, if he is, who, who's next in line? And the second part of the question, how will this affect our, recruit, our recruits that are already coming in? specifically wide receivers. All right, for no idea about who's next in line, Andy. I appreciate it. It's a fair question. I have no idea. haven't heard any names. I think I'd only hear them if he leaves. Ryan, what do you think happens? You know one of the recruits. If Liam leaves, you think the guys just kind of are still in, but they just want to see who it is? I I think so, because I think they believe that this is the offense that Stoops wants to run now. I think he has found success, and so he's going to go find a Liam 
part two yeah. uh, to replace him. So I think that will keep everybody intact. In I think you'll go find – I think Stoops will go find the next young Liam. Yep. I think that's totally what agree. he'll do. I think yep. – you know, he had a choice when he hired Liam. He was down to two guys. It was going to be Liam Cohen or Joe Moorhead. And he decided, even though I'm more probably comfortable with Joe Moorhead, I'm going to take a chance with Liam Cohen. And it worked. And now that it's worked, I don't think he's going back. And he, he's had great success getting, you know, guys like, you know, Brad White and Matt House and these young up and coming stars to come in here and thrive. And I think that's just what he's got a knack for doing. Yeah. JJ, what's up, JJ? Hey, Matt. Uh, first of all, I would not uh, root for Rick, uh, Rick Patino in the tournament. Uh, but I got two things. Uh, the first one is uh, my wife and I are moving to Louisville uh, soon, and we were looking for apartments, and we went to Yummy Pollo on you all's recommendation. How good is it? And that was excellent. Awesome. Uh, so keep keep the Louisville recommendations pouring in on the show. With, Yummy uh, Pollo is, is the best. Life. You're right. Uh, and my second thing is um, I wonder if you had any updates on uh, kind of the two – Big transfers. We were looking at seven banks of Ohio State and uh, Tyler Steen of Vanderbilt. Did you well hear? As- did you hear uh, Vince on Saturday on the pregame yeah. show? I, I, I yeah. assume those were the two guys he's talking about. I don't know that. I assume they were, and I think he. I can't give a better update than him, so I would go with what right. he said. And then uh, yesterday, uh, I don't know if this is. Uh, been something that you've seen, but uh, Western Kentucky's all-conference starting left tackle entered the transfer portal yesterday. Yeah, I have no. Um, I, it could be that's something that they would be interested in. I have no idea. I mean, it could be. I mean, I, I, I just, I, you know, I know they wanted to go get at least one, maybe two defensive backs, and I know they wanted to get at least one offensive lineman. Who they are, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, and he's a, he's a Kentucky guy, went to Trinity in Louisville. So gotcha. Well, we'll see. I'm definitely curious about that. All right, appreciate the call. 502 571 Text machine is 772-774-5254. Run! Go! <laughs> Downtown's Healthcare is growing with a second location in Lowry. Treat your knee, back, elbow, and hip pain with regenerative therapy instead of drugs. Call 303-292-9992 for your free evaluation at either location. Welcome back to Kentucky Sports Radio presented by Stockton Mortgage. Here's Matt Jones. We have a team of shooters, but we need a team of makers. There yeah. we go. Yeah. That's another one. That's a good one. You don't have to make them all, but you can't miss them all. <laughs> You know, somebody beat that 96 Kentucky team. Who was that? Who, who was that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> he does love one. to do that. Who was that that year? Who beat them that year? Uh, let's see. What else we got? No crying on the yacht. Good one. Matt, what about the thing I've heard him do the most? Screaming at people, no dimples while he's signing their balls. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> oh, these are very good. So we've all kind of heard these. A lot of callisms. <laughs> love them. There is a lot of uh, a lot of callisms. All right, so we do need to, to talk for a second about 40s article. So Pat Forty put out an article in which he basically he interviewed a former Adidas and Nike executive who says their job was essentially to be the middleman between those shoe agencies and or you know shoe companies and and schools and players, and he essentially alleges things on three teams: Zion and Duke, Anthony Davis and Kentucky, and then Louisville. So the two biggest college basketball players of the last decade and then the most scandal college basketball program of the last decade. The Kentucky stuff basically comes down to this. He alleges that a company that made bow to the brow and brow down t-shirts took some of the profits and gave them to Anthony Davis through a middle assistant AD at UK. That's basically the allegation. Now, leave aside whether or not you believe it's true, whether or not this person has any credibility. It's also been over a decade. But he alleges the money transfer went through the day of the Watford shot, which is kind of funny. (laughs) Here's what I find when I read the article. Two things stuck out to me. One, There was a time that articles like this would have worried me. 
even if I assume they weren't true, you just wonder, right? But let's just assume for sake of argument that what he said is true. Shouldn't Anthony Davis have gotten a percentage of that money? Yeah. On a base level, if they're selling his face on T-shirts, shouldn't he have gotten a percentage of that money? I'm just asking you. Yeah, we sure. we we all agree he definitely should have. In a, I'm not saying what the rules were. I'm just saying in a theoretical world, yeah. does it seem right you could sell a person's face on a shirt and they not only don't get any, but if you give them some, you're breaking the rules. That's stupid. Yeah, it's ludicrous. Now. And by the way, today that wouldn't be the rule. Correct. Today, Anthony Davis would probably get nearly all the money, or at least a big portion of it. So. Part of what makes me not outraged or scared is what they're alleging to happen is honestly what should have happened. And is now legal. And is totally now legal. Now, do I understand that that was illegal then? Yeah. But here's my question for all the Louisville fans who, by the way, skip over the fact that a big part of the article is about them. (laughs) Here's my question for you. If marijuana becomes legal tomorrow... And somebody finds out that 10 years ago, Shannon smoked weed. Are you going to put him in jail for that? No, absolutely not. I mean, marijuana was illegal then. Mm -hmm. But if it's legal tomorrow, what sense would it make to go back and go, we now think this is fine, but let's put you in jail because it wasn't fine 10 years ago. Let's go even further. Sports gambling is illegal. Not that I do it, but I do it. And so do a lot of other people. It's going to be legal, maybe even in the, maybe this year. If not, it should be, but it will be at some point soon. Are we going to go back and say, you put a bet in 10 years ago? You're going to the popo? Can't, uh, can, can you even do that legally from a legal I, standpoint? Legally, I mean- could you? Yes. Would it make sense? No. Why would you do that? So now we know this action. Again, even if you assume this person is telling the truth, this action we now know is legal, and it was. we now think it's ridiculous it wasn't legal then. So I'm not going to get worked up about the fact, Ryan, even if it happened. Yeah, I don't know how you can severely punish any of these schools going the world we live in now. I mean, they... Like you said, even if it was true, I don't. There may be a little smack on the wrist, but I don't know how you can really punish them now. How? I don't know. So, and then the second thing that occurred to me is how much these dudes have fallen off the radar. Forty Goodman, Thamel, Thamel. I have to be careful. He now works at ESPN, which I didn't know. <laughs> I can say it for you then. <laughs> I, I, by the way. Great reporter, if he if he's idiot. Yeah, that was Ryan. Uh, that was <laughs> yeah. Ryan said that. I I don't. It's amazing to me how much those folks have fallen off the radar. They used to drive the entire narrative about everything, about everything. Uh huh. Generated a lot what we talked and about. And I'll on be this honest show. with you, if the sheriff over there at Louisville had not tweeted out, and then people tagged me on, I wouldn't have even known Forty wrote that story last night. I might have heard today, but I wouldn't have known because I. That they've fallen off the map. Forty writes for Sports Illustrated. When's the last time you read Sports Illustrated? I'm being serious. When's the last time you read Sports Illustrated? The nineties. What sitting in a doctor's office and there's one laying there probably. But even the website. When's the last time you read the website? Oh, never. No. Who, who does Goodman work for? He works for something called Field of Sixty Eight. What is that? Well, it's a website a guy, my buddy Rob Doster. Has started and it's if you like college basketball, it's a good website. He does a podcast. I, I I give them a lot of credit. I hope that thing succeeds. But remember, Goodman used to be on ESPN Games. Yeah, that's right. And Thame will move to ESPN, but I didn't know. So I'm just saying, you remember how these guys used to drive the narrative? It's almost like you forget these dudes exist now, Ryan, which is I'm not I'm not even using it to put them down. I'm just saying the whole landscape of all this stuff has changed so much. It has changed. And it seems like if you're not 
at ESPN, nobody pays attention to you anymore. But I also think the things that they used to sort of get off on doing, people don't care about anymore. Yeah. They yeah. don't care if these guys get money. They don't. Now, does the NCAA care? I don't know. But I know the average person doesn't care, the average fan. Not in the world we live in today, like I said, no. And these guys always seem to have a personal vendetta against things. And well, they all hate Cal. Off. They all hate Cal. And, you know, it is what it is. But it's just amazing to me, this story, which the Louisville people are really trying to promote while ignoring that half of the article is about them. <laughs> I don't care. I hope Anthony Davis got the money. He deserved it. Now, he doesn't need it right now. But they were selling his face, Shannon, on the T-shirts. Right. He should have gotten money for it. He should have it's gotten the money. It's ridiculous that for that many years you could not make money off your own image. Now, is this the, this the guy who's say, saying this? Is the guy who's getting ready to go to jail? Yeah, but let me say that about that. I, and again, I'm not taking up this guy. This guy may be a huge liar. But people love to say, well, he's about to go to jail, so he must be a skeezy person. Usually when we find out what's really going on, it's a skeezy person telling it. Because good people are involved in schemes that end up in prison, right? So when, like every time the mafia gets in trouble, it's because one of the members turned on them. And all the other mafia people go, well, you can't trust him. Well, then who am I supposed to trust? I got to get somebody in the mafia, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah the people that, that sort of tells, tell on people are always going to have records themselves, I just don't think what they're telling on them really amounts to anything. Drew, what's up, Drew? What's up, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller? Ooh, what's up? Uh, I got my predictions for tonight, and then I got a question for you guys. Go for it. Predictions is tonight, 86-76 cap. All right. I think Grady, Grady comes out, has a killer game, 20 points. And then a uh, question for you guys is uh, – if Kentucky goes into the SEC tournament and can pull off and and win the tournament, beating Auburn, do you think we can jump up to a number one overall seed? No, unless Gonzaga loses. Yeah, I, I, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, I don't think I think we could if we were to win out and beat Auburn in the tournament, we might pass them and be like the second overall one seed. But we're not going to beat yeah. Gonzaga because they're not going to lose, and they're you know they did enough in the non conference to to get there. So I think no, we would be at highest at the second highest number one seed. Got you. Thank you for taking my call. Appreciate it. Anybody disagree with that? Nope, not at all. Yeah, I just uh, I could see Gonzaga losing. Well, I mean, oh, okay. Now if they lose, yeah, yes, I could see maybe like Santa Clara, or, but they would have to lose or St. Mary's. I mean, beating if Gonzaga. they don't lose, though, we're not, we're not, we're not passing them. Andrew, what's up, Andrew? Hey, Matt. Today, uh, of course, being from Tennessee, I know you know it's kind of a one of our bigger days as a Kentucky fan. But I, I think I have a prediction for tonight. I'm confident the Cats are going to go on the road. I mean, look what we did at Auburn without Ty Ty. We we're pretty much in command of, of that game. So I think tonight Tennessee's not as good as Auburn, and Euros is terrible. All he does is talk trash, and I think Oster's just going to dominate him and Fulkerson, who's like 35 years old and somehow still in college. So hopefully the Cats go on the road and get it done. I like it. I appreciate the call. I hope you're right. The, the key for me is stop Kennedy Chandler, right? Yeah, he's tough. He's a good player, and he, you know, we had a little trouble with him in the first game, even though we were running him off the floor. He still played well. We did. He played well. We had yep. to switch Ty Ty on him, which we didn't want to do, and and Ty Ty did a pretty good job. Yeah, and we may not have Ty Ty tonight. Yeah, yeah. Both both their guards, the, the little guard from New York, the, the freshman, he played well. Those, we might well, get some Dante tonight. You, yeah, I know you predicted that yesterday when the Ty. We're talking about Ty Ty. Might have to. I don't get know. Some minutes. He might have to. Only the cleanup specialist at your local Serve Pro can help make fire and water damage like it never even happened. Call 1-800-SERV-PRO when water threatens your home or business. Surf Pro's fire and water cleanup and restoration, and they're independently owned and operated. One call to fix it. Time will be of the essence, so remember this name. 1-800-SERV-PRO. That's S-E-R-V-P-R-O dot com. We'll make it like it never happened with Surf Pro. We'll take a break. Come back. Final segment. It's KSR. To talk to Matt Jones and the crew, call the Clark's Pump and Shop phone line at 502-571-1080 or 1-877-904-1080. Now back to Kentucky Sports Radio on Talk Radio 1080. 
Welcome back. Tech Sports Radio. 502-571-1080. Text machine is full of people asking questions, Matt. If they end up making marijuana legal, do you think the people who had past charges should have them taken off their record? I'd, I'd be fine with them taking the possession charges off. Now, the trafficking's a little different. Because right now, if you traffic goods illegally that are even legal, you can still be arrested. So the trafficking's a tougher call for me. But for, like, possession charges, if it becomes legal, Jen, I'm fine with taking... I don't like I don't like those charges being on people's record anyway Yeah, because it can make it difficult for them. You know, that's the whole... Remember the thing we did with the Kentucky Chamber, getting rid of check the box? Mm-hmm. The, you know, do you have to check that you had a, a conviction of something? Because you got to give, I've said this many times, you got to give people a second chance to start over in life. Yeah. If don't, you don't, you're just asking for repetition of, of, of bad behavior. I don't understand how somebody could be in jail or prison for something that's now legal. I mean, that's the top of hypocrisy, right? Yeah. So would you do that? Let's say you're governor, Governor Andy, but the dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they decide to make marijuana legal, which probably won't happen for a while. It, you know, we'll be the last state. To okay, do so it. fast forward uh, 10, 15 years. Everyone that's in jail at that moment for something to do with it, let's assume it's like using it or even low level, like selling it on the street. Yeah. Although there's probably not going to be that many people in jail at that. But let's, you know, theoretically. Yes. It's probably more about people's records than mm-hmm. it is who's going to be in jail. Would you say, I'm going to pardon all of them? Absolutely. Yep. You are all out. Because okay. it's legal now. Why are you there? Why well, am I going to keep you in jail for something that's legal? That makes zero sense to me. I, I mean, I think that's a fair argument. Okay. Ryan, what about you? Oh, I'm, I'm totally on board. Ryan's, the police will already be in Ryan's house at that moment. So <laughs> it, it, he'll be totally uh, fine with it. All right, a couple things. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to get more into it. We'll have to save it for another day. They're voting in the committee at noon on the private jet bill. We haven't talked about this. But these three dudes, these three legislators, one from Versailles, one from Henderson, one from Owensboro, proposed a bill that would make people with private jets or planes not have to pay taxes on them. That that seems screwed up. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Last time I checked, all of us have a car. We have to pay taxes on it. I just paid a lot of taxes. And their argument apparently is, well, the people with private jets, if you you make them pay taxes, they might move their jets to Tennessee or Ohio. Let them. Who cares? Who cares? cares? That's a terrible argument. That's almost as bad as Ryan's argument yesterday on the prop bed. I mean, what are we winning? (laughs) (laughs) I like how you just throw that in. I mean, what, you know, now I, I think the state maybe gets some kind of money when a plane takes off or whatever. But you know what? You can say the same thing about cars. I grew up in Middlesboro. There's a lot of people in Middlesboro that tagged their car in Tennessee because they didn't have to pay tax. And that was illegal, and they did it. But they haven't said, let's get rid of automo- ta- automobile taxes because some people in Middlesboro tagged their cars in Harrogate. I'll I tell you what this is. These three guys have wealthy Donors yes. who have private jets. Yes. And that's why they're wanting to pass this for those. Preach it, people. Ryan Limit. Yep. So that bill goes before the committee today. Here's all I'm going to say. I'm going to keep track of it. And everybody that votes yes, I'm just going to make sure everybody knows. You can make whatever conclusion about that you want. If you're somebody who's like, you know what? I don't think people with private jets and planes, I don't think they're getting enough benefits. <laughs> Life's just too hard for them. Mm-hmm. Let's not tax them. They don't Let's have not enough tax money. Them. Of all the people, I mean, the gas prices are up. I saw Biden yesterday. He has proposed that we 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 take a two year moratorium on the federal gas tax. That sounds like a good idea to me. Sounds like a gas great prices idea. are up. Let's get rid of the tax for a while because gas tax gas costs affect average people's lives. But what about planes? <laughs> How many people you know have a plane? I know there are some, but there ain't many. No. And I'll tell you this. If you got a plane, life's probably treating you pretty well. I'd yeah, say you can pay some okay. taxes. You Here are the three tax. people that uh, that have brought it up. Representatives Jonathan Dixon, Daniel Fister, Fister and <laughs> DJ Johnson. That's Those are the Johnson. three. Okay. So you know they got at least three votes. I will keep track, Shannon, on the other votes. I love it. Okay. Yes. Just so that everybody knows. I and want then to follow make, up on this. You can make whatever conclusion about it you want. Uh, Tinder Swindler. I got about 30 minutes left. Tomorrow is the only day this week where we're not on remote that we will all be there. 
Okay. So we will do it tomorrow. Okay. Good. All right. That's the only day where we'll all be here, and I want to make sure we're all here. So, David, go ahead, David. Yeah. Um, with all the love you've been giving Kyle today, why didn't you give him love when he was at Memphis? You because when, when because he did because he didn't coach Kentucky and I don't care about Memphis. Like, how come you don't give love to things that don't matter Kentucky. to you? I mean, who are, you're a fan of Louisville, clearly, if you're calling in. How come you don't every day give love to Virginia Tech? I've been waiting, David, to hear you say something good about Virginia Tech. When you gonna do that? I don't have. I, I just cheer for one thing. Thank God, I do too. That's why I didn't cheer for Memphis. No, nah, I'm talking about you, you dog cow. I wrote like, one comment on one comment section that you folks act like was a treatise I did for my college graduation. I wrote one comment where I said, I think Cal's dirty. And I did. But you know what? I was wrong. And you also know what? He wasn't coaching here. So if you want to hold that against me, feel free. But I keep waiting for your opinions on Buzz Williams at Texas A&M, David, and I haven't heard one thing about it. I know that's what I thought. Five zero two five seven one ten eighty. That was a good little segment, right? I there. I wish we had more calls from people like that. I enjoy it. It's just they know they're going to lose, Shannon, yeah. so they don't call a lot. I love when Louisville fans call because they have that they spend the whole time on hold trying to think about their argument. Mm-hmm. But once they get past that one sentence, they don't know what to say after that. Right? That's right. Yeah, shut them down. I gave him a chance. You didn't I, have I, much to say after that. I, I didn't give him a second chance. Yeah. Kyle, you get one rebuttal. That's you how get, you get on the show. You get one and then you're out. <laughs> Kyle, go ahead, Kyle. Kyle. Are you there, Kyle? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, go for it. Anytime. Hey, I had a Calism, but it was taken while I was on hold. Uh, can't miss them all, make them all. But while you, since you already said that, I got you on the phone, first time caller. Who are? Um, I'm, in, I'm in Omaha. Okay. So I get to. Gladly thank my locals for Davion Mintz on a daily basis. Oh, that's right. He is local to I there. love Davion. Well, I mean, he Great played it. I'll, I'll, listen off, I'll, I'll listen off there. Where's he from? I know he played at Creighton, but where's he from, Ryan? Do you know? I thought it was from, like, North Carolina or South Carolina or something like that. I'll have to look that up. Or what's the way Shannon's looking it up? I'm Where trying to find it here. Yeah. He is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Good call, Ryan. Thank well you. done. I'm glad we got him. I oh, love that yeah. kid. He's one of my favorites. Not just on this team. He's one of my favorites we've had. I just love the kid. There's just something about him. I think it's because he struggled through last year, and he was kind of having to be the best player. He reminds me, I've said this before, of Julius Mays, in the sense that if Julius Mays was on a good team and didn't have to be the best player on a bad team, I think we would have loved him. He just ended up in an unfortunate year. Well, that was true with Davion Mintz, and now he's actually getting to play on a good team. Now he's got the guy exactly what you're talking about. He doesn't have to be the best player on a bad team. He can be a very instrumental player on a very good team, and I think he's loving every minute of it. Don't you think if, like, Julius Mays had been, like, the fourth best player on the 2017 team, we'd have loved him? No kidding. Yes. Kind of a little chubby little dude out there lighting it up. He could shoot, man. He, yeah, he could. He definitely would. Cybersecurity is a difficult issue, Shannon, for most small businesses. I sit around all day going, man, what about cybersecurity? But... If you call Lex Geek, you don't have to worry about it. You already have enough on your plate as a small business owner. So take take cybersecurity out of it and specialize in providing solutions. That's what Lex Geek does. Visit LexGeek.com to schedule your free consultation. Give Lex Geek a call. They're a locally owned company and they offer 24 7 res- 24-7 support. They have it in Lexington. They have it in Louisville. It is LexGeek.com. Take away cybersecurity from the things you have to worry about. Yeah, let's say that you own a wrestling business and your social media keeps getting hacked. You know what? It happens. Just, <laughs> get Lex Geek. It happens. We need LexGeek to come in and, <laughs> and stop these OVW hackers That's right. from uh, continuing. 6.30 tonight, Ryan, is our pregame show. You can watch the game at KS right. Bar. Go cheer on against the uh, Vols. 6.30, I will see you then, my friend. Are you going to respond or not? I'll see you there also. Well, I won't be there. We're yes. going to have the show. I'll be though. there from Drew's house. There you go. I saw Bye. a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand. Excited for a road trip? Start it off right with auto coverage from American Family Insurance. J.D. Power ranked us number one in customer satisfaction with the auto insurance shopping experience among mid-size insurers. 
Get a quote at AmFam.com. American Family Insurance. For J.D. Power 2021 award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin.